Christ. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our God is mighty, wonderful God. He's the unchanging God, reliable God. Is the God that is the God of all flesh. Is the I am that I am. He is the lily of the valley. He is the rock of ages. Our God is the lifter up of our heads. Is our shield, our buckler. Is the king of glory and the king of kings. Who can be compared to this God? He's wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. The God who is, the God who was, the God who is to come. He is the most high, higher than the highest, greater than the greatest. Our God is able to walk on water. Our God is able to raise the dead. He is the only God that is living. He is the living God. Praise Him. We thank you, Father, for saving our souls. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the wonderful gift of Christ Jesus, thank you for salvation. Thank you, Father, for your blood. Father, we reach out to the flowing fountain of the blood of Jesus, and we apply that blood on ourselves. We apply it on this community, on our communities, on the environment. We apply it on our families, on our loved ones, on the work of our hands, on our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Life, your, our lives, are going to be completely transformed. We are going to have information from what we are going to do today. I mean, powerful information that will really empower you as a believer. I'm, I'll be speaking to you about the spirit of the Antichrist. Very, very key. You know, the spirit of the Antichrist. Let us pray before we start. Father, we thank you for what you have made us to start. It was meant to be a Monday. We saw the devices and the tricks that have gone on. But Lord, we are starting it today because we need to start it. Empower us. Pass on the information you want us to understand. Let there be power behind this. Let there be your spirit moving. Let it be all of Jesus and none of me. Help us not to understand you. Give us rema. Give us revelation. Let us be liberated and be empowered. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my name is uh, my, your brother, your friend, and my name Paul Adele. Now, you can see our videos that we say Global Evangelism and Revival Movement. Global Evangelism and Revival Movement. You know, just to give you what is going on here, some mo months back, we have a vision of the globe, the world as a globe with a cross in between and God said we must move to the next level with our evangelism outreach and we should term, we'll call it global evangelism revival movement it's, it's a non-denominational non-church movement that cut across to everyone that want to evangelize and want to see revival in our world so everyone is welcome to join what we do all this are Jesus loves you we give it to people give it to people so that those that want to put it on their neck, you want to put it on your car, you want to be trained to evangelize, just get in touch with us. You'll be trained, you'll be empowered, you'll be inspired. That's why you see Global Evangelism and Revival Movement. Okay, it's not a church, it's a movement that cut across every denomination. Let's go. My name is Paul Adele again. I'll be speaking to you about something that God has did on my heart for a long period of time. But I needed to be prepared spiritually because this is a, a warfare stuff before I get this. And before I started this, so many things have gone on to it. Even today to get it on here, I just was determined that this thing must get on here today. Otherwise, I should not have, I would not have done it. So it's just going to be brief and introduction and we'll continue. The spirits of the Antichrist. 1 John 2, 18 to 22. The spirits of the Antichrist. 1 John 2, 18 to 22. But with 18 to 19. Little children, it is the last hour. I'm speaking to all of us. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Listen, the Antichrist is coming. 
Even now, many antichrists, with unless many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. You know, the Antichrist is not here yet, so you don't get this wrong. But the spirit of the Antichrist is already here with us. The spirit of the Antichrist is like a forerunner to the Antichrist. Now, what is the Antichrist? What is the spirit of the Antichrist? I want you to pay attention because this spirit is doing a lot of damage in our world, and most of us don't know about it. What is the Antichrist? Anti or anti means against. Christ means the anointed one. So Antichrist means anything that is against Christ. The Antichrist is a spirit that is against everything that stands for a godly society, a godly nation, a godly family. I'll say it again. The Antichrist is a spirit that stands against anything that stands for a godly society, a godly family, or an individual that life want to live for Christ. It's a spirit that works against righteousness. It's a spirit that works, works against the Bible, works against anything that has to do with Jesus Christ and God himself. Now, this spirit can possess leaders, oppress them, and it can operate in various sectors of leadership in the society, be it educational, financial, health, media, hospitality, religion. This spirit can use leaders knowingly or unknowingly to work against the agenda and the plan of God. I will say it again. This Antichrist spirit is not only restricted to church setting. It's a spirit, it's a Babylonian spirit. I don't want to go too much because we'll be taking it step by step. You will really understand it if you pay attention. It's a spirit that works and operates through leadership. It can influence leaders in various sectors, be it educational, be it political sector, various sectors of society. What is the agenda of the Antichrist spirit? Is to make sure that Babylon, the worldly system, the system of the devil is established in every society. The Antichrist spirit is to promote the ministry of Satan to steal and kill and destroy by destroying various sectors of society using leadership, people. Now the confusion and the troubles we see in most areas of the world is this spirit of the Antichrist and its behindness. I will say it again, the confusion and the troubles that we see in most areas and most sectors of the world, this confusion troubles we see is this spirit of the Antichrist and is behind it. Now, the Antichrist itself as a spirit is a strong man. And for those of us who understand about demonology or deliverance, you know we have the strong man and we have the demons. Now, the Antichrist itself is a strong man. And it operates, this spirit operates to other strong spirit, I would say, or we would say strong man, like witchcraft, familiar spirits, you know, and other demonic expressions, religious spirits, sexual perversions, all kinds of prostitutions, amorality, confusion, infighting, wars, this spirit is behind it. And we know as we go on. Now, how does the Antichrist spirit work? How does it work? This is going to really bless you because this spirit affects families, it affects society, it affects nation, a very wicked spirit. And we ignore this spirit. It operates in our churches, in our homes. If you understand this spirit, how it operates, there are so many things that you see on the street. If you are doing evangelism and all these things, you will have conquered it on the street before you get to the street. Because this spirit is behind every opposition you see to a street preacher. Antichrist spirit is behind it. Now, how does this, work, this spirit work? Number one, the Antichrist spirit denies the trinity of God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It says there is nothing like trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
in one of the doctrines of the Antichrist spirit, the Antichrist spirit claimed boldly that God does not have a son. I will repeat myself again. In one of the doctrines of the Antichrist spirit, the Antichrist claimed boldly that God does not have a son. If I am doing this training in a church setting or in a conference center, I, will, I was going to read that doctrine to you so that you understand. But this is a public space, so I will limit some of the things you hear. When I'm, we're doing training, training people that go on the street, you will hear the doctrine and you understand it. I will analyze it. But this is a public space, so we'll limit that, leave that doctrine for now. But just know there is a doctrine of the Antichrist that clearly spells out or says that God does not have a son. The spirit of the Antichrist does not allow believer, does not allow people to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, nor acknowledge that the reality of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was crucified. The spirit of the Antichrist don't want that. I will read to you. He said, For many impostors, seducers, deceivers, and false leaders have gone out in the world. Men who will not acknowledge, confess, admit, the coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, in bodily form. Such a one is, imp is the impostor, the seducer, the deceiver, the false leader, the antagonist of Christ, and the antichrist. Look to yourself, take care, that you may not lose, throw away, or destroy all that we and you have labored for, for that you may persevere until you win and receive back a perfect reward in full. Anyone who runs ahead of God and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, who is not content with the who is not content with what he taught, does not have God. He but he who continues to live in the doctrine, the teaching of Christ does have God. He has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus Christ taught, do not receive him. Do not accept him. Do not welcome or admit him in your house or bid him God's speed or give him any encouragement. For he wishes him success, who encourages him, wishing him God's speed is a partaker in his evil doings. Now, Second 2 John 1, 7-11, Amplified Classic. You know, for those who are unbelievers that will be watching this, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man that leads to destruction. The Antichrist is a spirit that lead a lot of people into his way so that he, they will be destroyed. I will say it again. I will repeat, keep repeating myself. The Antichrist spirit is a spirit that deceives people and takes them away from the sincere, the real God, the true God, to lead them to destruction. So this spirit does not believe that Jesus Christ, does not allow people to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Or oh, Jesus Christ is God himself. Number two, the Antichrist spirit blinds the eyes of people and keep them in bondage. The Antichrist spirit blinds the eyes of people and keep them in bondage. And I'm really, I will read that to you again in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4, Amplified Classic. But even if our gospel, the glad tidings, also be hidden, obscure, and cover up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God. It is hidden only to those who are perishing and obscure, only to those who are spiritually dying and veiled, only to those who are lost. For the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' mind that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the Messiah who is the image and the likeness of God. The Antichrist blinds people's eyes not to see that Jesus Christ is God, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It blinds people's eyes to the gospel. It makes people to hate the gospel and if they hate believers and preachers, you will find out as we go further how the, the, the Antichrist and the church. It's a, it's a topic in part of this study. Okay, so let's go. Number three. The Antichrist is a deceiving spirit. I mean, I mean, a very highly deceiving spirit. Just like the serpent deceived Eve in Genesis 3.13. Genesis 3.13. When Eve said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. 
And that day, man, we lost our fellowship with God. The Antichrist is executing that agenda in these last days. Deceiving a lot of people in order to destroy their destiny. If you are a believer with, with a passion, I mean sincere passion, to win souls to Christ, to see the souls of men saved, this spirit is going to make you a target because the Antichrist spirit is against anything God. And the, the truth is, this spirit is operating in our churches, it's operating in society, it's everywhere. And most of us, because of not understanding spiritual warfare, not praying for the gift of discerning of spirits, we don't understand the oppression of the spirit. So an Antichrist can even be your pastor. An Antichrist can be your choir leader. An Antichrist can be somebody that holds a position in the church and is, is carrying the agenda of the Antichrist. You will find out as we go on, as this Antichrist affects society, families, church, and distress society. Let's move for, for that. Number four. The spirit of the Antichrist is a domineering spirit. Wow, yeah. It is a domineering spirit. Now, I said earlier on, the strong man is a strong man and is called the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, some of the expressions and influences of this strong man, the Antichrist, is through a spirit we call the spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel. Now, the spirit of Jezebel is also under a strong man we call the familiar spirit, which comes under the spirit of witchcraft. And that's where the Antichrist is operating these days highly, using the spirit of witchcraft. The strong man is the familiar spirit, the spirit is the spirit of witchcraft. And it's two, like I would say, strong men, the Antichrist and the familiar spirit coming together. And that's why you see sometimes they are so effective because the devil knows the power of agreement. When you see the spirit of the familiar spirits, which is a strong man, and the Antichrist operating together, you see high levels of witchcraft. Witchcraft in dimension you can't understand. I'm not talking of a witch, you see somebody that, that um, you wear something, put paint and lips, and you say Jezebel. No, some of those ladies are not are part of even Jezebel. Do you see Antichrist, somebody with the Antichrist spirit possessed with le high levels of witchcraft? No earring, no makeup, with hair, this there are stuff they used to tie their hair, this um, S to something, with an SU hair tie, long skirt, long dress. But let the spirit of God open your eyes to check other person. You will see that this person is an agent of the devil, a person operating in the occult. So it's a domineering spirit. And remember, as this year will end it for tonight, wherever there is witchcraft, there is death, there is destruction. The Antichrist tried to dominate communities, dominate families. Wherever the Antichrist police is operating through witchcraft, the pastor will dominate the people. It's, an, it's part of the, the, the sub so This is just an introduction. In a marriage where the Antichrist is operating with the spirit of witchcraft, the wife or the husband will dominate. And you would like to know that people possessed with the spirit of Antichrist and witchcraft, they do miracles. They do signs. They do wonders. Some years back, I have a, a white friend. He said, Paul, I'm giving you this DVD. Go and listen to it. When I read this about nine years, ten years ago, when I listened to that DVD, my eyes, I, I, I would say, I got enlightened. I, I listened to something somebody has done research on and was analyzing what I'm telling you now. Some of the things I'm telling you now. So it took me years to put all these things together. The Antichrist can be your pastor. It can be your, your, papa, your, your pastor's wife 
operating highly in the in the in the spirit realm as a witch sitting as a queen. The devil don't like what I'm telling you now. He's angry. That's why he didn't want me to do this. It's a murderous spirit. A spirit that like blood shell. For 2 Kings 9.22 2 Kings 9.22 I, I, I will read some things to you. I, I, I just want to introduce it today. I don't want to go so deep so that you can be ready. You, 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 you know, you, you, these are not the times, the Bible says the last hours. This is the last days. So you must take your Christianity serious. You must really take your Christianity serious. Honestly. You know, some of us, because of our background, we have been oppressed. We know what it means to be oppressed. So when we became a Christian, we saw liberty. We decided that, <laughs> I know oppression, so I don't want to be oppressed again. So you must take your Christianity serious. Now listen to 2 Kings 9.22 So he answered, What peace as long as the harlotries or the witchcraft of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. So it's a dominating spirit expressing itself through the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of witchcraft. It's a spirit of high levels of bloodshed and you know what? Targeting the blood of godly people, believers, you will find out as we go for now. Targeting the blood, the life of believers. You saw in 1 Kings 18.4, 1 Kings 18.4, you, go, you can go and read all the story. I, 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 will, I will read that to you again. Oh, Jesus, help me. Hallelujah. It says in 1 Kings 18 4. So, for so it was, why Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, that Obedia had taken 100 prophets and hidden them 50 to a cave and had fed them with bread and water. Massacre 100. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. Operating through the spirit of Jezebel, dominating spirit, witchcraft spirit. You know the story of Nebuth. I think that's in, in Second Kings, is it Second Kings or First King 21? The guy had a vineyard, and according to the laws of the of the Old Testament, you are not supposed to give out your inheritance to the next person. And Jezebel, the spirit possessed, operating under the spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit of witchcraft, met Nebuth. I met the husband and said, why are you, why are you sad? Because the guy, Nebut, have told the husband who is the king here that he is not going to release his vineyard to the king. And the king was sad. What the king, that is a man, cannot get, the Antichrist spirit, that spirit of witchcraft, operating through Jezebel, got it, killed the guy, set him up, destroyed him. That is exactly how the Antichrist operates. It destroys, it kills, it executes the agenda of the enemy to steal, to kill, and destroy. It takes people's, you know, you don't see people snatching people's husbands, snatching people's wife. This is the spirit of prison. It's, it's already in the world. You saw what I read from the Bible, I mean, from the Bible. Revelation 19 2. Revelation 19 2. For true and righteous are his judgment, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and has avenged on her the blood of his servant shed by her, is a spirit of high level of immorality, sexual perversion, of all kinds. I mean, of all kinds. And because it's a dominating spirit, this is what I'm going to close with tonight, and this is why you should take key. Because it's a dominating spirit, every agenda of the Antichrist is enforced. I will say it again. This is good for you if you are, so that you can wake up with your Christianity. Because the Antichrist spirit operating, expressing itself to witchcraft, occultism, and all these things, is a spirit that wants to enforce every idea, every ideology. 
if he says that if a man or a woman that is possessed by the Antichrist or a leader in an office in a, a sector of the society is possessed by the Antichrist, that leader is going to try to enforce the agenda of the Antichrist, whether the people like it or not. And that's why we see confusion in our society. That's why we see so much confusion, so much tension in our society. That's why the Antichrist spirit enforces the agenda of the devil and until you resist. That's why the Bible says, resist him. Resist him. Resistance is like a military word. That's the only weapon you need to kick the Antichrist from our nations, our countries. Resist him. Bind him. I close with this. This is an introduction. For the next couple of weeks, if Jesus story, we'll be analyzing the spirit as this spirit destroy, try to destroy homes, societies, communities. But God gave us a way out, which we have been teaching people in the church for some weeks now. No matter how powerful the Antichrist seems to portray itself, no matter how strong the Bible says strong man, but the Bible gave us something that you have, that I have. It says, no one can enter a strong man's house and spoil or plunder his goods, except he first bind that strong man. Then he will spoil or plunder his goods or his house. The Bible says, Matthew 18, what I read that from Mark 3 27. Mark 3 27. Matthew 18, 18. It says, Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. Now, this is it. God is not going to come down to bind the Antichrist force of spirit for you. God is not going to come down to bind the spirit of witchcraft for you. No, no, no. One of the respected preachers who has gone to be in the Lord, Kenneth Hagin, I was listening to him on one of the videos on Facebook. He said he was having a conversation with Jesus Christ and a demon, like a monkey, was intercepted and Jesus was looking. So he is looking at Jesus Christ for Jesus to drive the, the monkey like the demon the, that looks like a monkey. He's looking at Jesus to drive the demon. And Jesus was looking at him too. So, he's expecting Jesus to do something. In the vision, he was translating. And Jesus says, you do something. Because you already have the power. So he did something. He got the demon out of the way by binding the demon. And he continued his conversation with the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a time... We went for a program. We are not meant to go for that program because the distance is far. I mean, very far. But we were still up to go for that program. This is what I'm closing with, to tell you that you have power so that you can start using it against witchcraft, the antichrist, familiar spirits. So we went for this program. So we sat down, they did the praise and worship and everything. And a woman, a minister of the gospel, minister, a woman, a lady minister, Got on the pulpit to minister. Immediately to start a ministry. God opened our eyes. We saw a monkey-like structure sitting on her shoulder. And it came to our heart. This is why you people are here. We exercise what I'm telling you now. The power to bind. Immediately we said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you Spirit that be oppressing this woman will bind you. Get out now and go. The monkey like structure disappeared from that woman. Now, God wanted us to know that these things are real. After the program, she was now giving her testimony that she has been oppressed for a long time and she's still going through that oppression, though she's ministering. Wounded, but ministering. But God sent another brother of hers or sister of hers, a, a brothers and sisters, so that that demon will get out of her life. 
Beloved, you have the power to say no to the Antichrist that have been operating through witchcraft, familiar spirits, operating your community by the formula that Jesus gave us. Bind him. Bind the strong man. Say no to the strong man. So in the coming weeks, we'll be teaching you in this global evangelism and revival movement how to stop the Antichrist from operating further in our nation, educational sector, in our families. Simple formula today we learn, bind. Bind the strong man. Simple way you do it, in the name of Jesus, I bind the expressions of the devil in my life and my family. Or if you want to make it specific, I bind the spirit of the Antichrist. Lose your hold, lose your power in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the spirit of Christ. I lose the spirit of revelation, the spirit of grace. I, you are troubled by witchcraft. I bind the spirit of witchcraft. Lose your hold, lose your power. I release the spirit of Christ in Jesus' name. And if you are watching us from anywhere in the world, will be watching this video. In the name of God who called me out of Islam, if you are oppressed by the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of witchcraft, or any unclean spirit or strong man, in that name that's above all name, Jesus, those evil forces are bound. I rebuke them. I command them to leave you now. Let them lose their power over you. Let them lose their, their, their authority over you. In Jesus' name. Receive the Spirit of Christ. Be free in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you have not given your life to Christ, that's what I want to end with. You know, one of the assignments of the Antichrist is to blind people. He did it to me for a long time. I mean, for 15 or 16 years, I was really hell bound. Those are the times I can remember as an adult. Really hell bound. But the day I confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, that was the end of the rule of the Antichrist in my life. And Jesus became my Lord. And freedom came. You too can be free. You can be educated and not free. You can be rich and not free. Just yesterday, I was speaking to a lady. She said, I have everything. The lady was telling me, say, I have everything. A good job, children, a good car, a house, everything. See, there is something missing in my life. I said, well, that's why God took me out so that we can talk. She was resisting when we started. But when I started to tell her what I'm telling you now, that the vacuum in your life, that which is missing in your life is Jesus because your life, our lives, is, can only be become worthy, can only be full of peace and joy when Jesus, who owns us, comes into our hearts. It's a simple prayer. You see, you might say, all these things they are saying, they are just trying to deceive me. They just say, heaven does not exist, hell does not exist. You see, if, but if it's true, just say, is you you are a doubter? How they call the people agnostics or whatever? You, you, you know you doubt. You know you are not so sure. But look at it. Can't you try to be on the safer side? Because if it's really true that heaven and hell exist, and at the end of the day you die outside of Christ and you end up in hell, it is the greatest eternal regret. There is no going back. And you remember me. You remember so many people you have heard the gospel from. And it is a regret to eternity. But the other hand, you say, okay, let me try this man, Jesus, like I did. You will find out that you have made the greatest bargain. And you will not regret eternally. You'll be in eternal joy and peace. I call you to Jesus. I give you Jesus. Loving man. He does not, it's, it's, it's not an occult stuff that you can't go out this that do, do this thing. it's a simple relationship when you build this relationship oh jesus it's so sweet when you build this relationship with him it's not uh, the pastor said i must not do this the pastor said no no 
he, when you surrender to him, he himself begins to tell you the things you will do and the things. He, he, it becomes a relationship, you know, like your husband and wife. It becomes intimate. Look at me. I can't stop talking about Jesus. I can't stop because I, I understand where I'm coming from. I give you Jesus. Simple com prayer and commitment. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Take it easy. Enjoy yourself.